You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. All right. Jesus on the cross became every sinner. So when the law found Jesus on the cross, the law did not find the sinless Son of God. The law found, like we said last time, Cain the murderer. But who else did the law find on the cross? When Jesus, the sinless Son of God, hung there on the cursed tree for us, who else was there? Not just generic sins, right? We want to be specific about these. On the cross was found David the adulterer. Remember the story of David. It's funny. You, you read the scriptures and it says David is a man after God's heart. We see all these psalms written by King David. You see, David, he's the guy who slew Goliath, believing in God that God was formed. He can conquer this Philistine with just his slingshot. And now, now look at the guy. He's sitting on his rooftop. You know, he's the king of Israel. Everyone else is off fighting for him. And he sees Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, and he desires her. He covets her. And then to cover up his misdeeds, instead of fessing up to it, confessing what he did was wrong, he said, tries to cover it up first by getting Uriah drunk, but Uriah doesn't go with it. And because he can't convince Uriah to sin, he sends Uriah back to the front with his own death list, his own death certificate in his hand, <laughs> and he kills him. So he kills Uriah to cover up the sin. So where is David then? What happens to David? Remember, Nathan is sent to him because David's not confessing his sin. He's still trying to cover it up. But Nathan comes to him and preaches that lovely sermon about the lambs. And David gets mad and he says, my Lord, you are that man. You are the sinner. Don't focus on anyone else. It's just you. And David repents. And Nathan absolves him, forgives him. The murder of Uriah forgives him the coveting, forgives him the adultery, forgives him the lies and deceptions, everything forgiven. And that's where we get that beautiful Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. On the cross, Jesus is, was right there, David, the adulterer, so that that sin may be forgiven. Jesus purchased forgiveness for David on the cross. And even though David was born and died before the incarnation, before the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus, he is forgiven because of the cross, just as we are forgiven after the cross. Because Jesus died for David's sin, Nathan could then declare him forgiven, reckon him righteous. Because did David do everything perfectly from then on out? No, he was still sinful, <laughs> still a sinner. And yet in Christ, completely forgiven and covered in righteousness. Because Jesus paid the price for his sin on the cross, his adultery, his envy, his lust, his lies, Nathan could speak him forgiven. And it's the same for you today. When you sin, when you've gone astray, even though you do desire the things of God, when you've made your mistakes and failed, your pastor says, in the stead and by the command of Christ, I forgive you all of your sin. With the same forgiveness that Nathan forgave David, so does your pastor now forgive you. With the forgiveness Jesus won on the cross for you. So be at peace. Just as David heard those words of absolution, so you hear them as well. God bless y'all. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.